This is example problem 1.2-3. The problem states, determine the normal stress in the rod at points A, B, C, and D. We have an axial loaded member with a variety of loads in different directions and different cross-sectional areas. The first thing I'm going to do is find the cross-sectional area at each point, A, B, C, and D. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is draw a free body diagram. Okay, I've drawn my free body diagram. I think it's useful at this point to draw a graph of the internal resultant normal loads. I'm going to do that now, show you what I mean. I've prepared my graph paper uh, to draw a chart of the internal resultant load P. Now, beginning at the very left end of this uh, structure, if I was to draw a theoretical cut somewhere between the end and before the, uh, the 4 kilonewton load is applied, I would have an internal force uh, balancing this 2 kilonewton external force. And that would be in compression, so it would be a negative 2 kilonewtons. So I'm going to draw an internal force of negative 2 kilonewtons from the left end up to the point where the 4 kilonewtons is applied. At this point, we get an addition of 4 kilonewtons pointing in the opposite direction. That's going to cause a 4 kilonewton jump in our graph, so that from this point going over to the right, our internal force is going to be uh, 2 kilonewtons in tension, or positive. Okay, we see nothing changes right at this point. No change in our loads. It continues at 2 uh, kilonewtons positive. That's 2 kilonewtons in tension until we get to this point here. Now at this point, we have 8 kilonewtons applied uh, in the opposite direction of the 4 kilonewtons here. That's going to cause a jump in our graph down to negative 6 kilonewtons, or 6 kilonewtons in compression. And the internal resultant load stays at 6 kilonewtons in compression uh, until the end of the structure, where the 6 kilonewton load is applied. This chart is useful because it shows the internal resultant load at any point in our structure. Now I think it would be helpful to draw another graph. This next graph will be a graph of the cross-sectional areas in the different sections of the structure. Now I'm ready to calculate values for internal normal stress at all points, beginning with point A. Now normal stress at A is going to be simply the internal load, P, divided by the cross-sectional area. And we can get those values off of this chart. Internal load at A is negative 2 kilonewtons, and the cross-sectional area is 0 0.113 times 10 to the negative third meters squared. I've done two things. I've converted negative 2 kilonewtons to 2,000 newtons. When I divide it by 0 0.113 times 10 to the negative third, I get a very large number at 17.7 million newtons per meter squared, and I can just write that as 17.7 megapascals. Now I'll do the same for the remaining stresses, point B, C, and D. I've calculated the stress at all of the points, A, B, C, and D. Notice that I kept the sign uh, consistent with the internal normal force. Where the internal normal force is negative, the stress is negative. This occurs at both point A and point D. And we're done. 